Uh, in a previous video, we talked about the HTTP protocol and the request and response. And in this video, we are going to give a closer look at the request and response, which we call HTTP messages. Uh, you know that uh, HTTP protocol is all about a client talking to a server and the client sends request and the server responds with the response and this request and the response they are called messages so a message is nothing but a chunk of data flowing through the network connection which the client opens while it talks to the server and how does that chunk of data look like and what all things are there in the data that we are going to see in this video so let's start by looking at a live example what you see on screen now is the command prompt of my windows 811 machine and i am going to use the command line c u r l application which is a web client and using this i'm going to send a request for a resource uh, let me actually paste the command because there's a long command see here this is a url we are, i'm going to use url application and this is the resource that i am trying to fetch and because the body of the response will be very big i am going to redirect that to some response body.txt because we don't need to look at that so let me press enter and see what happened uh, better let me take this to our discussion pad and let's resume our discussion there so I got this copied from my command prompt and as we saw there this is the web client which sent a request to this resource and here the connection got established connected to www.sanjaypatel.name that is the host that is this one which has got this IP address that means that this is identifying the computer where the web server is running in port number 80 and after the connection got established this is the request from here to here this is the request message which got sent to the server and this from here till here this is the response so let's see what format are the request and the response following the first line this line that means here in this request this is the first line and in the response this is the first line these are called the start line and if you are talking specifically about request this is called the request line And when you are talking about the response, this is called the response line. This is also called the status line. Status line. And in general, that is called a start line. So the first line is the start line. And then, just following the first line, there are a few key value pairs in every line as you see here in this case in this case of request these are these and in the case of response they are starting from this tail this one and these are called headers in the case of request they are called request headers and in the case of response they are called response headers and following the headers there can be an optional empty line as, the, as, as in the case of response here here this is a blank line blank line and then there could be a body in this case of response we have a body actually we were supposed to uh, have a body big body here which is the content of the resource fetched that is the HTML document in this case but because 
we have redirected the output to some other file this body is not being shown here so this is called body both the request and response can have a body but in this case of this request there is no body because body is optional so this is a broad overview of how a message looks like in summary there is a start line and following the start line there are a few lines which are headers and then there can be a blank line following and then there can be a body following okay so far so good so let's now go a bit deeper into all these let's start with the request this is called the request and the first line of the request as you know is called the request line the request line the first word in the request line which is get here in this case is called the method and the method is used to indicate the server what to do with the resource for example in the case of get we are telling the server to provide the particular resource there are other methods like post which is used for sending some data to the server for processing put is used for creating or replacing a resource when we are using the put method we will have to provide a body in the request and the body will go and replace the particular resource that means if we would have done put here then the body we would have provided a body and the body would have gone and replaced the resource at this particular path delete delete is used for deleting a resource and also there is head which is used for retrieving only the headers for a resource like it's like get but in case of get the actual resource plus the headers will be retrieved and in case of head only the headers will be retrieved there are some more methods also and i think it's a good time to talk about safe and add important methods some of these methods do not produce any side effect in the server side for example this get method is just for retrieving a resource and it's not going to do any updates or puts or deletes in the server side and so is the head method which is used for retrieving the head and these methods are called safe methods also some of these methods can be applied repeatedly without any problems for example the put method if you send a put request repeatedly it's just going to replace the resource with the body of the put request and if you do it once or twice or thrice it's not going to harm the server the same data is going to go there so these kind of requests are id important requests and i bet you can now guess what are the id important requests the put request and the get request and the delete request and the head requests these are an important request because you can do it repeatedly you can get multiple times the same thing you can put multiple times the same thing you can delete the same resource multiple times or you can get the head of the same resource multiple times but the post is not that important because this processes some data Uh, you use typically post request to update some data for example in a bank you can use the post request to add some money to a bank account and that is not that important okay so now let's talk about how the requests are sent using these methods just now we saw c url which is using by default the get method and there are different web clients using which you can experiment all these methods but as an application developer you are more concerned about how to send a request from the browser using these methods the get requests are normally sent while the user clicks some link or types a url in the address bar of the browser post request can be sent using html forms by setting the method attribute uh, let me actually show you how that looks like so you use this type of html 
code for sending post request from browsers. This is a form and notice this one here the method is post here the action is the URL pointing to the resource and here you see that there is no host information and all here and that means it will use the same host and the same protocol and the same URL scheme of the page in which the form is shown. So when the user submits the form by either clicking a submit button which we have not shown here or by pressing enter or whatever way a post request like this one goes to the server. Notice here that the method is here post and the body contains the form inputs as a request parameters. If the method would have been get here, the request parameters would have got attached here following a question mark. But because the method is post, the request parameters can travel in the body. So what we learned is that you can use a form and a post method for generating the post request and you can use URLs for the GET request as well as you can use forms with method is equal to GET for GET requests. So this was about the GET and the POST methods. And how do you use other methods like PUT or DELETE? Let me tell you that HTML including HTML5 does not support the PUT or DELETE methods. And so if you want to use the PUT or DELETE methods you have to use AJAX, you have to use JavaScript and generate the request programmatically from your code. Okay, enough about methods and uh, let's conclude this video here and in the next video we'll resume from our CURL example.